Hello again and welcome to another busy instalment of the ABC of EVs. Today we're looking at BEVs. That's B-E-V and what it actually stands for. We try and demystify the world of electric vehicles for anyone new to them. My name is Martin Lee. Welcome to the channel. And if you like what we do here, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss a show. So let's start with answering the question, what does BEV actually stand for? If you don't know anything about electric vehicles, we talk about BEVs quite a lot. Not your second favourite Auntie Beverly, but no, BEV, Battery Electric Vehicle. And although it seems obvious to maybe you and I, if you've been watching this maybe for a few weeks now on our channel and you're learning about the terminology, but if you are new to EVs, or EV curious at least, let me explain. There's a lot of confusion out there, not helped by some manufacturers conflating electric vehicles with electric vehicles because they call them electrified. And if you see that word, you always need to know they might be hiding something. They're trying to get away with telling you, hey, this car's an EV, but really, it might just be a soft hybrid or something that's still got a big, stinky, gas-guzzling engine in it. So, electrified, be careful of that. If you see BEV, B-E-V, battery electric vehicle, then you know it's fully electric. It has a socket on it. You can plug in and charge the battery. That, in turn, gives power to the motor and that turns the wheels. Let's have a very quick look at other terms that BEVs can be confused with. On this show in the past, we've covered REXs, which are range extended electric vehicles. They have a combustion engine in, but they don't drive the wheels. They are a generator, so that in turn charges a battery, which gives you more range, but the battery always powers the motor. Sometimes you'll call them series or serial hybrids. Everything's in a row. So you can also hear the term FEV or PHEV floating around. That stands for plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. Now, in this case, you have a combustion car and often that is attached to a gearbox and it's the engine that drives the wheels, but also running through that gearbox can be the electric power, a small battery, a relatively weak electric motor that can turn the wheels in fully electric mode sometimes a few miles, sometimes 30, 40 or 50 miles, sometimes longer in the case of cars like the Polestar 1. Another term that you may hear is hybrid or mild hybrid. These are 100% combustion powered vehicles. They often have very small batteries on board and anything that's a hybrid, anything that doesn't have a plug socket on it will often have also a very small electric motor. They are there to assist the petrol engine and keep the car moving, often at very low speeds on relatively flat ground. Why would you make one of these cars? It sounds like a, an awful compromise. They often are, but what they can do is they can lower the emissions to a level that makes them very attractive to sell for these car manufacturers. Plus they get to carry on selling combustion cars that they're very good at making, but they're certainly not electric cars. So now let's dive into a bit more detail about what a BEV is. Firstly, what differentiates a BEV from another car? I suppose you could say that there's three main differences actually. The first of those being that it has an electric motor that is the sole means of driving the car. Simply put, an electric motor converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. That in turn drives the wheels. We've had electric motors for years, and just like those batteries that power them, they've experienced their fair share of technological advances. Although they're much more straightforward devices than a combustion motor, they're still very complicated. And as any of you EV drivers watching this know, the electric motor is very, very efficient, wasting so little energy in the process. There's also much more reliability compared to a combustion car. Well, you might be saying, that's great, Martin, but if it doesn't burn fuel, then what turns the electric motor? That's energy from the battery, of course. Now, we all know what a battery is. We've been putting them in remote controls and using our mobile phones for a while now. And in principle, it's the same idea for electric vehicles. What we refer to in an EV, in a BEV, a battery electric vehicle, is in fact a lot of batteries. And we call them cells, all together as sometimes smaller modules, and then those modules are stacked to make a larger battery. But when we say the battery, we're often talking about the larger battery. At this point, it leads us on to battery chemistry. And this is an area that constantly 
changes, so we won't dwell on it too much, but let's just take one example of the Tesla Model 3, because it highlights the fact that different battery chemistries exist and have different attributes. With the Tesla manufacturing plant going online in China, there are now those cars being made in China, looking exactly the same from the outside and made in the similar way that it is in the USA. However, they use different battery chemistries. The first is the NCA battery chemistry. That is lithium, nickel, cobalt, and aluminium oxide in the battery. It's very energy dense, typically has a higher cost. However, in China, and for a long time in commercial vehicles, we've been using LFP batteries. That is a lithium iron phosphate battery. That's the chemistry. It removes the cobalt. It's slightly less energy dense, although improvements are being made in recent years, but it's also cheaper to manufacture. And so it's just as good to use in cars. And that's what Tesla use in their Chinese made standard range cars. Now that we've covered the motors and the batteries, let's have a look at how you get energy into them. Of course, you charge your BEV, but different cars charge in different ways and at different speeds. Simply put, we charge our car by plugging them in. Now, we've already made videos about charging connectors and charging speeds, so I'd invite you to go check those out after this video. But in summary, you can charge your car on a slower AC unit that you have at home, or maybe you'd find in a car park. You can even plug them into a domestic socket at home. These charges vary from a slow two kilowatts up to about 22 kilowatts in general, but you can plug in a BEV to a fast DC charging station. Some of those cars like the Ionic 5 and Kia EV6 can charge around 230 or 240 kilowatts, effectively giving you three or 400 kilometers range for a 20 minute stop. So we're out of time on today's show. We'll leave it there. This was a really high level guide to when you hear the phrase BEV, what it actually means. Battery, electric, vehicle. And if you want more detail, then have a look at our I Speak Electric series on this channel and also the ABC of EV. We're trying to introduce these terms and then help people learn about them. What we want to know from you though, in the comments below, is what you thought of this video. How many people that you speak to may be interested in EVs and don't know what a BEV is. Is it helpful to have these phrases around electric vehicles? Are more education programs needed to reduce that confusion? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. And if you liked the video, give us a thumbs up down there and it tells us to make more shows just like this. And we'll see you on the next one.